about to watch a heavyweight matchup. In this corner, Jeanette Lee, the number two ranked player in the world, the Black Widow, former U.S. Open and national champion, and 1994 Player of the Year. In this corner, Allison Fisher, the number one ranked player in the world, the Duchess of Doom, two-time defending world and national champion, and 1996 Player of the Year. Today, they'll both be trying to deliver a knockout punch and move closer to one of Nine Ball's most coveted titles. From the Treasure Island Resort and Casino in Red Wing, Minnesota, this is the Brunswick Billiards National Nine Ball Championship presented by Viking Q. Welcome, everybody, to the Treasure Island Resort and Casino. Allison Fisher, having won the lag, is at the table in the first rack of this race to seven. And as that three ball drops, we will take a look at Jeanette Lee and tell you how she got here. You'll see first she defeated Peg Ledman, then moved through Michelle Fleetwood, Mary Guarino, Vivian Villarreal, 9-4, and then lost to Gerda Hofstetter, 7-9, to nine, to put her on the loser's side. And that is where she is now facing Allison Fisher. And this is how Allison got to this point, the defending national champion. She defeated Tammy Wesley Jones, 9-7, beat Jan McWhorter, Eileen Pippen. She, too, lost to Gerda Hofstetter, 6-9. And then beat Helena Tornfeld in a very tough match, 9-8, and Nikki Benish, 7-5. So both players trying to move on. The winner of this match plays Gerda Hofstetter in the finals of the National Nine Ball Championship. Mitch Lawrence along with Ava Lawrence. And Ava, what's the table look like? Well, she has an open shot at the one ball here, as you can see. But the two that's tied up with the six ball here at the opposite side of the table. So she's going to have to pull the cue ball all the way around and try to come down for the two. And she came up quite a bit short on it. She's probably gonna have to go into safety mode here unless she looks at the combination. She may wanna make the two six combination or she's gonna just thin the cue ball, play a safety and hide it on the other side of the table. She has a lot of blockers there. And uh, she made a good save, although she did not find the cue ball behind the seven. As you can see, there's an open lane here to get at the two ball for Jeanette. Jeanette trying to do the same thing, get the cue ball behind that seven ball. Ooh, she, she opened it up. Well, she a little extra roll there. That might have carried it just far enough. You look at Jeanette, as we said, the 94 national champion. Allison does have an open shot. She's going to pocket this two ball in the right-hand pocket, and the four is on the other side. And she just come back up. Oh, she came on the wrong side of it a little bit. She and as we, sorry, as we so often see, just kind of jockeying for position here in the opening rack. <coughs> this is a race to seven. So you take a look at the four ball on the rail. She's going to have a nice and smooth stroke, trying to thin this four ball all the way down and come across for the five on the opposite side of the table. What a great shot she made. She get on the five. She's not where she wants to be. As you can see how close the five is to the uh, cue ball here, and the cue ball's on the rail on top of it. I believe she's going to try to play the five ball in this pocket. Very difficult shot. She's going to have to jack up. You can't really see, but she's really jacking the cue up way up in the air. Very difficult shot. It's hard to find that little spot on the ball that you need to hit. Dead center. But that was a great shot for two different reasons. If she would have missed that fine ball and would have hung up in the pocket, the eight ball would have been a block. She would have played safe at the same time. So the speed was perfect. It was a great shot. And that's what she obviously would like in this opening rack. Now she's faced with something even more difficult. With the bridge, she's going to have to jack up over the eight. Make a thin cut on the six and keep the cue ball for the seven. Boy, is she playing well. So she's playing some great shots right off the bat. We're going to take this opportunity to talk to you about the rules of the game. Obviously, the object to make the nine ball. The balls have to be played in numerical order. And they can be played in combination. Any foul will be cue ball in hand. As I said, this is a race to seven, and there is a 30-second shot clock on the players. They will get one extension per rack of an extra 
30 seconds. Those rules brought to you by Viking Cues. She's got a very thin cut on the eight. Boy, we have seen her play a couple of very strong shots right off the bat against Jeanette, which she needs to do. Allison Fisher, the defending national champion, takes a one-game-to-none lead against the number two-ranked player in the world, Jeanette Lee. Come on back to Red Wing. Started. Table with a one-game-to-none lead. And not what she wanted to happen. That was big because as she gained control of the match there with making, uh, winning the lag and breaking and running out, she just gave up control back to Jeanette here by scratching. It is so costly, especially with the balls break, broken open like that and great, two great players like this. Ball in hand to start off when they can control that cue ball right off the bat is uh, very costly to scratch on the break. As you can see here, she hit the ball solid, but just a little bit more to the left than she wanted. And that's the most common scratch in billiards right there on the nine ball break. You saw that cue ball really take a, almost an abrupt turn into the side pocket. There was so much action on it. So Jeanette has a great opportunity here to even this out. Oh, she almost missed that three ball. She kind of banked that one into the side, but she's left herself great position on the four. As you can see, all the balls are open. There's that shot again. I thought, I thought that was going to stay out. Robbled it a little bit, but she's back in control again. She has a good combination shot here on the uh, six ball. As you can see, the six ball is hanging right here in this pocket. And either way, if that had stayed out or not, yeah, she played position, she made sure she had a shot at the seven just in case that would happen. So, nice stop shot here. And this is what Jeanette needed. A break on the break, so to speak. She's playing with a lot of speed right now. Mm -hmm. I think I mentioned that to you the other night. I was aware of how quickly she was playing. She was, there was an attitude about her that there is no, no problem with any shot. And she makes quick work of that lap. As we said, the number one against the number two. You don't want to go away. This is going to be a great match. Stay where you are. Thank you. And one of the most consistent players on the WPBA Tour with 39 out of 49 top five finishes. And she didn't quite get as much on that break shot, I don't think, as she would have liked to. She didn't fail to pocket a ball. And... Uh, she has not left an open shot for Allison, although I believe Allison can hit the one ball. She can see here, the one being over here, she may be able to shoot the cue ball and have it come just hide behind the five ball over here. No, she's gonna, she's gonna try to kick at this. It's very surprising. Instead of playing a push out to somewhere on the table, not being able to, it was my mistake, I she was snookered behind the eight ball on the rail there, but I thought she would at least push out somewhere. Which she has the option to do. And she decided to kick at the ball. Didn't feel comfortable that there was any place she could uh, put Jeanette where she couldn't make the one ball considering that it's so close to the pocket. Still surprises me. She took a big chance there. Now Jeanette with ball in hand again. Big advantage. Extension. Jeanette's going to take her extension and think about this a little bit, make sure she doesn't hit one of these balls on the way down to the two ball that you see on the bottom part of your screen. She's going to come down here this way for the two ball. Sometimes even though you have ball in hand, it still doesn't make getting from one ball to another an easy task. And in that case, because of where the balls were laying after the break. Right. Two more wasn't a funny situation. So here, Jeanette's just going to go ahead and uh, confidently play for the combination on the seven ball in the corner pocket, I believe. If, yeah. the, th if the three ball passes by the seven, she's in good shape. She just come up for the four. Well, I think it does. Looks like she has room. Yeah, yep, she does have is. room. 
comes over to the side rail for the four. Seven ball there is creating a little bit of problems. She can't play the five there, so she's going to have to draw the cue ball back and probably play the five ball in the uh, side pocket. No, she drew it all the way back for the corner. Had more of a comfortable shot to be able to stroke that ball all the way through instead of trying to play perfect position in the side pocket. She's looking very confident right now, very strong. And Jeanette said her back's been bothering her some and she slowed down her game a little bit. And uh, I think her back's feeling, when I talked to her, she said her back's feeling better, so she's back up to running around the, the uh, table. She's a good example for those of you at home that are watching, that are working on your games, of somebody who has found her own rhythm, the way she likes to play. Some players take more time. Jeanette has been playing very well without taking too much time to think, just letting her instincts guide her. She spent thousands of hours hitting balls. And this is when you let go and let that training take over. This nine ball to go up 2-1. And there it is, an impressive two games for Jeanette Lee. See a very serious game face on right there. Both players trying to get to the finals of the National Nine Ball Championship. Come on back. Okay, Jeanette Lee at the table. Two games to one against Allison Fisher. And a couple of very impressive games by Jeanette, quickly moving through the racks to get to two to one. And as we saw earlier, when Allison scratched on a break, Jeanette says, okay, I'll give it back to you too. And that, Ava, has to be a really tough thing when you're on a little bit of a roll like that. It slows you down very quickly. Pretty much puts a halt to it, especially when you're playing a top player like this. It's kind of a battle of the breaks right now. Allison has a pretty open table. Her main problem is at the bottom of your screen here with a four and a nine ball tied up. She's going to need to play this to get pretty much straight in on the three. Great shot. It's come down somewhere in, in this area right here to get position for the four ball. Great speed control. Allison has one match under her belt here under the television lights from earlier when she had played Nikki Benish. She's gotten used to the speed. Get the speed control down and look Breaks at the position the of that shot. Well, she's going to have to play this with a little bit of reverse, reverse English. A little right hand English is going to keep the cue ball. On that side of the nine, Oof. just perfectly. <laughs> and that's really where the great players shine, is knowing because the, the distance that they have to work with is so minute that if they make any kind of an error, they right. can be in big trouble. And she too, like Jeanette, taking advantage of the breaks that she's given. And round four goes to Allison Fisher. Two games apiece here in Red Wing, Minnesota. And there, one of our gracious hosts this weekend, Tom Carroll, the special events manager of the Treasure Island Resort and Casino. They've all been great this week. The number one player in the world, Allison Fisher at the table. Two games apiece with the number two player, Jeanette Lee. And so far, it's been as billed. A great match. Oh, she, she almost oh. scratched again. And as you can see, Alice a nice and solid break. She doesn't put her whole body into it like you see Jeanette do. She just really stays right there. It's mainly arm action when she breaks the balls. But she hits the one ball nice and solid, and she still gets good action on the balls resulted in this, this particular case as she made a ball and get great position on the one. And one of the things that we've talked about over the course of the last couple of years in Allison's game is the break has not been the strongest part of her game, although she works on it a lot and it's gotten a lot better, but she finds a way with her great shot making and the other parts of her game to have dominated the tour pretty much the last couple of years. <laughs> And she's also more consistent than any other player right now, though, when she does make a ball on the break that she runs out. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
Her cue ball control is so good when she does break the balls that she usually does end up with a shot on the one. It doesn't fly out all, all across the table. And in this case situation, she has solved the puzzle of this rack very well. Great position for the five ball here. She's jacked up a little bit. The, the seven ball's a little bit in the way for her arm, so she's going to have to elevate the back of the cue just a hair. But I don't think there should be a problem. Make that stop right there for the seven. And again, with the eight ball being in the center of the table like this, she has a lot of options where she wants to go with the position. Looks like she's going to go around two cushions and play the eight ball in the side pocket. Oh, she didn't want to do that. She got away with it. The one ball, she really did not want to go into that eight ball. She's just going to pocket the eight ball in the side pocket and have the cue ball come around for the nine. Just like you guys on Beautiful speed. And in the back and forth, the ebb and flow of this match, Allison Fisher with the last two games after Jeanette Lee won a couple. Allison leads three games to two. Stay right where you are. 3-2 over Jeanette Lee. And again, not much body movement in the break. She made sure she didn't lose the control of the cue ball as earlier and scratch on the break, so instead she lost some of the power and she left an open shot for Jeanette. You can see the five almost went in the side pocket, and then the four balls in the way of the cue ball a little bit. She has a lot of angle here on the playing the one ball in the corner pocket, and it makes it much more difficult because of this four ball being right behind the cue ball. And it looks like the two and the nine is tied up. It's going to be an interesting rack to watch how oh, Jeanette. Jeanette tried to cut it in the opposite pocket. That was an excellent try. I was going to say how Jeanette solves it, but it's looking like Allison's going to get a chance to solve it. See, that was uh, an excellent try at that cut shot. Very difficult. We'll see what Allison's going to do. She's going to pocket this one ball and try, preferably to go into these balls unless the two ball passes. I think she wanted to oh. try to break it up a little bit, and it didn't. Again, it was a great try. She's probably going to have to play safety. It looks like she can't hit enough of the two ball to pocket in the corner. She would uh, commit a foul by hitting the nine ball first. She's looking at a safety here. She could try to bank it into the corner pocket. You she asked. Play she, safe. You saw her ask for extension. Trying to figure out what to do here, obviously. It's a tough call. No matter what she does, she's uh, she's got a difficult shot ahead of her here. She's going to try to. Look at this. If it hits the, the three ball, she's in great shape. Look at that shot. She needed to hit that three, or the, the two ball was going to come out and give Jeanette a shot. But she's uh, she's going to bring out her jump cue here. You see how close the eight ball is to going in. This this has really been it's so many close close shots, either going in or missing balls, or it's just it's been a really interesting match so far. I think. I'm going to jump right over and try to pocket the two ball in the corner pocket. She hit the three. Ooh, she almost got lucky and pocketed the three on that shot. Again, it was a good hit. She was a little bit off, and it resulted in leaving Alice in the shot at the two. You see see her, sorry, drive that cue down into the table. Allison is just going to try to roll this two ball in. Again, she has an excellent opportunity here. There are really no problems in this particular rack. You have the four ball is over on the, on the cushion. Four ball is over here. Five is right in the side next to it. Six on the opposite side of the table. And uh, the seven, eight, nine, everything is wide open. Again, cue ball control is the most important thing right here. Do not make this rack any more difficult than it needs to be. I rack. think I could make the five there. You can make the five. Problem for you would be get to the six ball. But not for Allison. Got perfect here on the six. She's just going to try to draw the cue ball, get a little bit closer to the seven than she is right now. 
just like that. And with the eight ball sitting right in the side, she just needs to draw it back a little bit, get a comfortable shot on the eight, and keep it right there for the nine ball. And like any great sports person, she's making this look a lot easier than it really is. Those of you playing at home and have played the game for a long time know what I'm talking about. A that nine ball left for three games in a row and a 4-2 lead. Pretty run here. You saw a good example why Allison is the number one player in the world. Four games to two in a race to seven and a trip to the finals of the national championship. Stay where you are. We're glad we're here. We're glad you're with us. Allison Fisher at the table, up four to two against Jeanette Lewis. She is playing some beautiful. Let's see if the one goes. No. Oh. And that was an important last couple of inches right there. Absolutely. Here's a great opportunity for Jeanette to step up. She has an open shot at the one ball right in the pocket. The two, as you can see, is right down here. So she needs to just come off and come down here for the two ball. And uh, right now, this is a tricky run out. The uh, five looks like it passes just fine, but it's a tricky run up because every ball, the two balls down here, the three's on the other side of the table, then she has to come back here for the four, and the five's on the opposite side. So she's going to have to do a lot of moving the cue ball back and forth. Here's, here's the three ball here, the four, then she has to go to the five, and she's constantly moving back and forth. So it's a lot easier to to mess up position a little bit as opposed to when the balls are on the same side and you can just kind of clean off certain areas of the table. She has to do a lot of work here. But there aren't many players in the world who are better at it than when she's really playing. She has great cue ball control normally. Absolutely. She's looking at, she's very, very close to being straight in. She can draw it or she can try to cheat the pocket a little bit and spin around with high English. I think she's decided to draw the cue ball. She's going to have to be careful for the 6-8 in the middle of the table so they don't... Yeah, she changed where she's hitting that cue ball. She was drawing... Great shot she just made. Look at the stroke she put right on, on that ball. Wow. And that was a beautiful example because once she made the decision to change where she was going to hit the cue ball, she went at it with conviction, and that's oftentimes what it takes to hit a great shot. She didn't have any indecision once she actually went to hit it. That's true. And she solved the biggest problems of this, of this rack. From here, she needs to pocket this five ball, and I believe she's going to try to draw it back for it to play the six ball here in the side pocket. Just nice little smooth draw stroke back. Great speed control. Pocket the six on the side. She's going to want to draw the cue ball back to about where it is right now to have a good angle make the seven to get to the eight. As you can see, she drew the cue ball straight back. She does a nice little draw shot on the seven. And she has perfect position on the eight. She's not straight in, which she did not want to be straight in. She wanted enough of an angle to just drift the cue ball over to one. She looks determined, doesn't she? She was just going to say, you're looking at the face of somebody who is not about to give up. Four games to three now, Allison Fisher over Jeanette Lee. You're watching two of the greatest nine ball players on the planet. And there are two of the important cogs in the wheel of Brunswick Billiards. On the right, Mark Stover, the vice president. On the left, Tyler Scott, the director of operations. What a great sponsor of this event, the title and table sponsor of the National Nine Ball Championship. The three. The Black Widow, Jeanette Lee, stalking down four to three against Allison Fisher. Now you get a look at Jeanette's break, which is markedly different than Allison Fisher's break. Yeah, I watched the ba uh, putting a whole body into this as opposed to Allison, who's mainly a stroke shot. Jeanette gets a lot more power under the break, and look at that opening she has. There's a good look. So her, whole, her whole being goes right through. She lifts up in the air and gets a lot of power on the break. Great break shot. 
and uh, she controlled the cue ball well. She has a great opportunity here. There's really no major problems. This is the key ball right here, the three ball. She's going to pocket the one. The two is right there next to it. And she needs to, she needs to come around a couple of cushions to play position for the three and get a good angle on the three so she can get to the four. She has to be careful so she doesn't end up getting snookered by the eight ball. Oh, she went straight across and it almost got her in trouble. No, she's in good shape. She can make the three ball in the side pocket even if it doesn't go in the corner. Does she have to watch out for the five after the three here? Um, Does she have enough of an angle on it? If she it cuts it into the side pocket, she can just roll the cue ball down for position on the four. There's no problems. Good shot. And so in the last rack, Allison Fisher didn't pocket any balls, came very close to and didn't. Jeanette won that game. Break, run out. This is what happens at this level. Boy, I'll tell you, anything is possible with players at this caliber. This caliber. What Jeanette has to do, again, she's going to pocket the five ball in the side pocket over here and have the cue ball come down for position on the seven ball. When she got straighter than she wanted. This is, not, this is not where she wanted to be. She can see well, the cue ball and the seven are both on the cushion. So the cue ball is off just a hair, maybe just enough for Jeanette to be able to get off the cushion enough and draw it back up with the other. She's going to make it in the side pocket. Look at that shot, absolutely perfect. She hit it far enough to where she gave herself an angle. All she has to do is pocket the eight ball. The cue ball will automatically drift down for the nine. Ball. And there is a, really a confident play. We got a good look at her face as she was shooting that shot, and there was no worry there. Most players would have been scared, but not Jeanette Lee. We've got a tie game. Rounds even, four game apiece. Allison Fisher and Jeanette Lee in a race to seven. Don't go away. Exactly what we did. A great nine ball match to move into the finals of the national nine ball championship. Cue ball got knocked a little funny there. She uh, she broke the balls well, but she ended up with the cue ball at the opposite end of the table from where the one is. She can see the cue ball stopped. She did everything right with the cue ball and went into the cushion. Oh no, it came down and got knocked a couple of times. It looked like it might have scratched there for a second, but she ended up with uh, a shot. She has, can see the one ball. She can see the one, but she can't really pocket it in this spot, so she's going to have to play a safety. She's taking her time and looking at it here. I think what she's going to try to do is probably play the cue ball behind the three ball. She has an opportunity to hit this one ball and have the cue ball drift behind the three. Having won a couple games in a row, there was nothing she would like more than to be able to stay at the table. Often that's not possible after the break. Kicks at oh, it. She kicked at it. Didn't see that. Oh, look at that. <laughs> and she did exactly what she said, which was to leave the cue ball there. The only difference is I don't think she planned on making the one. No, she wanted an open shot. I, did, I thought she could hit more of it. She decided to kick safe, and the one ball went in the side, and she got snookered. So only Jeanette knows if she was trying for the one and just mispositioned, or if she was trying to play as safe and got unlucky and made the one. She's going to have to kick here into the short, ra short rail and try to hit the two ball. And Watch out. look out for the cue ball. Yeah. Uh oh. That could be costly. So Allison Fisher with ball in hand, and this is kind of what's been happening this whole match. It seems like one player gets a little run, a couple games, and something happens either on the break or situation like that. Allison Fisher back at the table now. In essentially a race to three. This is a best of seven match. We're tied four games apiece. Winner meets Gerda Hofstetter in the finals. And Allison's been staking out the table, double checking, because it's very important. The key ball in this rack is to get on the four. The four at the bottom of your screen right next to the nine ball. She wanted to be almost straight on this three ball, but just enough angle to be able to draw it back. Trying to avoid touching the four and the nine. Great speed control. Just drew the cue ball back. It's like the, the cue ball landed on the cushion, which really limits you how much English you can put on it when when uh, 
you can't t shoot at the whole cue ball. So she's going to have to settle probably for a tougher shot on the five. It looks like she's going to be able to pocket the four ball in the corner and have the cue ball stop, just hit here and stop off the nine and have a shot at the five ball in the side pocket. Just Good like call. that. Beautiful she touch. Has, she has a shot at the five, but it's a tough shot. It's got a funny little angle to it. Fortunately, all she has to do is pocket the five ball because the six ball is sitting right there. She doesn't have to do anything fancy with the cue ball. Just make sure she makes the five ball on the side. Great shot. Very steady. So you're getting to see all the aspects of the game. Power shots, touch shots, and a lot of will here between these two players. Allison Fisher's will, one game dominant at the moment. She takes a 5-4 to four lead against Jeanette Lee here in beautiful Red Wing, Minnesota. Come on back. The break of Allison Fisher, game 10 of this national nine ball championship match. She leads five games to four against Jeanette Lee and a good break there. That See was such a great kicks break. Out. And very unlucky there. Just like you said, the five just came out enough to block her shot at the one ball. Now, it's interesting to see here if she's going to go ahead and kick at the ball like she did earlier. Is she remember she uh, kicked at the ball, I believe, in the, the first, first or rack. second game mm -hmm. instead of pushing out. And I think she's looking to do the same thing. Although, if she, even if she makes this ball, as you see we're here where the two ball is, when she comes in on this angle, the cue ball is going to come down in this area, and she may not get a shot on the two. So it's very risky either way. But I don't quite know where she should push out to anyway. She may want to tie up uh, the 7, 8, and, and 2 ball a little bit. Or it's, it's very, very tough to be able to, uh, to tell what she's going to do. She's definitely going to try to go yeah. two rails, a kick at this, or one rail, oh, and she's scratched. So scratches Twice have played now. an important part both on the break. Both players have scratched on the break. Both players have scratched during racks. And this is the kind of seesaw battle that we're, we've been talking about. Both players taking advantage. We'll see if Jeanette can here. Well, Allison was in a, tr a difficult position either way because it was really no good place for her to roll out to. But, but this is exactly what she didn't want to give Jeanette because she had a oh chance yeah. to put the ball in the hand and play a shot on the two, which she might not have. And Jeanette, with ball in hand, just made a quick error there, a very small error, but it might cost her uh, at least having a much more difficult rack than she wanted. The seven ball, when she played that two ball, it just barely touched the eight to put it in the way for the seven. So now she's going to have to draw the cue ball all the way back and play the seven ball here in the side as opposed to having the corner pocket open. She made a great shot. One thing about Jeanette that I've noticed, she really likes to play the draw shot. I think it's a dramatic shot. Yeah, I and mean, she likes you, to hit the ball firm she does. instead of rolling the ball. That's true. And it just it seems like every time we've watched her, or a lot of the time, when she hits that kind of shot, she doesn't take any time. She really, it's a, it's a full it's true. part of her arsenal, which you would expect the number two player in the world. And Jeanette here is looking either to use the bridge, shoot this left-handed. She can't really quite reach it as tall as she is. I don't think she's going to use the, the mechanical bridge here on the shot on the eight ball. Anytime you use that, it makes the shot more difficult. Obviously, with this eight ball being pretty much straight in, it makes it easier. But all you need to do is put a little bit of English, unwanted English, and it can pull the ball out of the pocket. Thing always looks like the bat signal to me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what that does is give the player a variety of choices, what kind of English to put on, and also heights if you need to go over a ball. So. She used it exactly the way it was designed. And again, this would tie the match up. We have played 10 games. And we are tied five games apiece. In a race to seven, it can't get much better than this. Put your run. Table, we're tied at five apiece. This has been a great match, Ava, it really has. We've seen all kinds of different shots, and we've seen two tough, really competitive players at the top of their game.
That's true. It's been a, the battle of the breakers, actually, because both players, I don't think either one have made any major mistakes yet. Uh, it's been about who has had an opportunity to have a shot after the break. And this time it was definitely Allison. Jeanette hit a good break. Balls went all over the place. As you can see, there are no problems anywhere. The one ball is open. She needs to come back here for the two that's down here. She has the three up here. And again, it looks like the key shot is going from the three ball to the four. The four ball is down here on that side of the table. So she needs to really play some good, strong cue ball position to stay on the correct side of the ball and work out a good pattern here. She drew the ball back just enough to get a good shot at the three ball. Allison had six classic tour titles, plus the world championships this year. Two-time defending national champion. She does not want to give this title up. You're a former national champion yourself, Ava, and you know what it means to carry this around with you for the whole year. Yeah, and this is, this is, obviously, the being the world champion is pretty amazing, but this is the WPBA national championship, and this is all the top players that you've been playing for in the tour are in this event, so. And it's not only, we should mention, that it's 44 of the tour players, but there's also two representing the Viking Q's amateur championship, one from the BCA Masters Championship, and one from the AccuEye College Championship, so there's a little extra added attraction to this national event the best of the best and here you have a great opportunity for Allison to take charge again of this match to get on the hill she's left herself great angle on the seven to come back down for the eight ball she could just go ahead and play the uh, the eight really in either corner pocket whatever she more feels more comfortable with she decided to go the easy way just roll it up Nice straight-in shot on the eight ball. Keep her head down here and just follow the cue ball all the way down for the nine in the corner pocket. Uh-oh, that's the only thing she didn't want to happen. Cue ball hit the point of the side pocket as it was heading down towards the other side of the table, but she still has an excellent opportunity here at the nine. It's more of a cut that she wanted, obviously. She has to be careful not to let the cue ball go. She takes her time. Good look at a solid stance and no problem. Super. Allison Fisher on the hill, 6-5 to five against Jeanette Lee here in Red Wing, Minnesota. One more game for her. She will defend her title in the finals. Stick around. Look at the cue ball control on that break. It stopped completely in the center of the table. It got knocked around a little bit, but she has an excellent opportunity here. It's tough to see. Here you see the layout of the table, and it's difficult to see if the one ball can pass by the five into this corner pocket. It looks like it will from the way she goes down to attack here. And if she does, she could be in good shape here on this rack. She pocketed two balls on the break. Controlled the cue ball beautifully. I don't know about your Mitch, but I don't think she needs to work that much more on her break. <laughs> <laughs> well, I Seems always so said when everybody was talking about how, uh, the fact that her break was not the strongest part of her game and everything else, and I thought, well, she's winning so much that it's almost scary to think about what would happen if she had a phenomenal yeah. break also. Absolutely. But she has shown a lot of resiliency. She was down five games to two against Nikki Benish and came back and won seven to five to get to this point against Jeanette. And as we talked about before, she seems to find a way to win, even on those days or in those matches where she's not playing at her top. And she has certainly been that way against Jeanette here, and it's not over yet. She looks at the four on the side. She's going to try to draw the cue ball back just a little bit. That was, that was a gutsy shot because it's very easy right there to, to almost to shoot a stop shot and be snookered behind the six. She just drew it back about an inch and a half. Perfect position on the five. She'll just come on around two rails. Perfect position in the side pocket. Look at that cue ball. Control. And you know what's, what impressed me about that is that was a strong shot and dead center. And this is what happens with Allison. This has been an the incredible match. The Duchess of match. Doom, when she smells it, boy. And, and you know what? Jeanette did nothing really wrong other than miss the break. Made nothing on the break in the last rack. Allison Fisher.
moves into the finals against Gerda Hofstetter, 7-5 to five against Jeanette Lee. A great match, a great nine-ball match. Well, well-deserved applause, Ava. I'm telling you, this is one of the better matches we've seen in a long time. No big Anybody mistakes, really. I don't remember anybody again. actually Jeanette missing Lee. a ball other than a super, super tough uh, cut on the one ball that Jeanette was shooting. And a couple um, of scratches. A couple of scratches, there. especially on the break shot. Other than that, it was a phenomenal match. And there you see the little smirk on Allison Fisher's face. She knows she's won the match here before she even pockets that nine ball. What a superb match by both players. And Mitchell has made his way down to the tournament arena where he is with Allison and Jeanette right now. Well, I am down here on the floor and we talked a lot about this being a, uh, the same kind of atmosphere as a heavyweight uh, fight. And it really felt like that. Uh, it wasn't that there were a lot of mistakes made. We've all been talking about it down here. Uh, Jeanette, we'll start with you. Uh, a great match. Both of you played really well. Thank you very much. I think we were both showed up and it's really nice because uh, I know the crowd's expecting to see some good playing so it's nice when we we both come through with it yep and uh, the number one and the number two players in the world and you gave us everything that we asked for here and in, in as I said beautiful Red Wing Minnesota yeah <laughs> there's there's definitely an exciting rivalry here and the crowd is uh, they just kind of keep you really anxious and pumped up and it was a lot of fun well, thanks for a great match. I'm going to Thank turn you. it over to Allison now. Um, you are the two-time defending national mm -hmm. champion, so you're going for your third in the finals against Gerda Hofstetter. Um, how did you feel? It must have been an exciting match for you to play, too. I know you like when the competition is keen and, and you rise to the occasion, as Jeanette said. Yeah, well, I struggled a lot against Nikki because we had some messy games, and I, I wasn't thinking straight at all, and she played very well and put me under pressure. But against Jeanette, as she said, you know, we got this rivalry going. We, we both love playing each other and we both got a lot of respect for each other's game and it was a case of who got in first and we were doing what we were supposed to do, you know, clearing the table and there were very, very few mistakes. Right, that's the way it appeared to all of us who were watching. It, came, it kind of went back and forth. You'd win a couple of games, Jeanette would win a couple right. of games. Um, and as you said, it's kind of what you expected. Nobody really did anything wrong. It was just yeah. a question of you standing at the end. It's always an exciting match to look forward to. Um, I think she really beat me bad in San Diego earlier in the year, 7-1, but, um, you know, fortunately I've had my revenge since. But, you know, it's either going to be one way or the other. We're either going to have a really close game, or if one of us is off form, then it's, you know, it'll probably separate. The difference in score will be a lot bigger. But, uh, yeah, it was certainly that was one of the great ones. So the fact that she beat you 7-1 in San Diego, you don't hold a grudge or anything? No, I don't remember that game. <laughs> <laughs> you don't lie awake at night thinking no, about that. but, you know, you make mistakes, and she punished me, you know, in that tournament, so... Let's take a look at the, probably, although there were many great shots in this match, what we think may be the key shot, your last break. Yeah, you know, I've been working on my break a little bit and, uh, you know, just to, to keep my body still because often I move the body before I actually strike the ball. And, you know, everything fell perfectly. And that was the case in all the match, really. The match, every time we broke, the table would be spread very well. There would be no messy situations. So right. there was not very much strategy. It's more make the balls. Yeah. But that was a great break because it not only made a ball for you, kept you at the table, but gave you a shot on you the know, one and the table was yours from yeah, there. Yeah, the break is so huge in nine ball. And if you've got a good break and you, you've broken the balls well and you left an out, then... You know, you should win the game. Well, you did your job and you won seven of the games, and that was enough to get yeah. by Jeanette. And you're going to play Gerda in the mm -hmm. finals and try to defend for a three-peat here. And it's uh, everybody is happy about it because you're the best player in the world right now, and we're glad you're in the finals. Thank you. So we came to the northern part of the United States in Red Wing, Minnesota, to see some great nine-ball action, and we were not disappointed today. We talked about a great fight, and it was that Jeanette Lee. Another strong tournament for her, finishing third. She will be back, as we know. And Allison Fisher, a chance to defend her title against Gerda Hofstede in the finals of the Brunswick Billiards National Nine Ball Championship. Always great to see top players at the top of their game. We're glad you've been with us. For Ava Lawrence and everybody here at the Treasure Island Resort and Casino, I'm Mitch Lawrence. We'll see you soon.